talk about making selections and layers in Photoshop. Um, so first things first, I, you're going to want to clean up your line art and have your line art pretty much ready to go. This line art still needs a bit of work, um, but I want to go ahead and show you this very easy technique. So um, to start out with, um, I want to talk about the difference between open shapes and closed shapes. So in this image, it, it, an image that could mostly be composed of closed shapes, but um, has a, a couple of shapes that are not fully closed as well mixed in, which can make things a little bit complicated. So for example, if I have my magic wand tool, this is a very easy way to make a selection. And I click right here in my little worm. Um, it has a shape that it can select. Meanwhile, if I click over here in this little millipede, because it doesn't actually connect with the outside world there, it just sort of goes out into the world. So um, control D will deselect. So I'm gonna just talk about right now dealing with closed shapes specifically because that's a very easy way to um, make selections. So um, what I wanna do is I wanna create a pink layer for my little pink worms. So first things first is I'm gonna add a layer right here. You can hover over it and it says create a new layer. Great. Uh, you can even name them if you have a lot of layers and it's hard to keep track. Pink. All right. So the way this works is I want to be on the background layer. I'm going to make a selection on the background layer, but I don't want to draw on the background layer. I want to only draw on the pink layer. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the background layer and I'm going to use my magic wand tool for this method. I'm going to just click in there and then I'm going to press control or, um, no, shift, I'm doing it wrong. Shift. And when I press shift, it adds a little plus mark there. So I can press shift and I can add to my selection. So I can add different things to my pink layer. I'll just start with this, this one little worm, but I could theoretically select a lot of worms, right? So then I'm gonna actually, here, I'm gonna zoom in and show you an issue, right? Um, so if I colored this in as is, I'll go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and select a pink. Um, we'll make it a nice, out of control pink. Oh, it's still in grayscale, so I wouldn't let me select pink. Do you want to take it out of grayscale mode and put it back into color mode? Don't flatten. Let's try that again. Let's grab ourselves a pink. Pink. Worm pink. All right, there we go. And I'm going to grab myself my favorite paintbrush tool, and I'm going to go ahead and make the slides quite large because I can't really draw outside of my selection. Now, remember, I've made the selection on the background layer, but I've clicked over to the pink layer so I can go ahead and color it in, right? I don't have to worry about being careful because I have that selection. It's pretty good, right? And if I turn off this layer, you can see that I have my worm selection right there. The problem with this is that if I was to print these two back to back, um, there is the, the pink layer touches the worm layer the line layer so closely that any little bit of misregistration would show as a hairline. So most likely the way that this would print would look like that, right? You would see this white hairline around your worm. And we wanna be able to kind of like prevent that from happening and, and not set yourself up for really tricky registration. So we're gonna engage in something called trapping. So what we're going to do is we're going to still be on our, our background layer. doesn't matter because the selection is there. And we're going to go on to um, select, let's see, modify, expand. So this will actually take my, my existing selection and make it a little bit larger. So let's see what happens if we do that by like four pixels. Let's see. So you see how that kind of like, oh, that was pretty good. Let's actually expand it by five pixels. Select, modify, expand. I think maybe five or six might be actually perfect for this like thickness of line. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So what this means is that I'm gonna have a fatter line. The line will sort of sit on top of the color instead of it being puzzle piece with like right up butting, abutting to each other. They'll actually kind of stack a little bit on each other. And that will mean that your registration doesn't have to be quite as perfect. This technique is called trapping. And so you can see here that I need to go back in and add in the extra pink. So I'll go ahead and do that here. Make sure you select on that pink layer. <laughs> and I can go ahead and make my layers a little bit more thick. 
okay? So that is gonna print better. Um, now, this makes it a little bit harder for me to see what I have going on, right? I'm like, well, I wanna see how thick my line is. I wanna see how this is gonna look. All right, so there's a trick for that too. So let me go ahead and take my line layer and I'll put my line layer on top. All right. Okay, so it's not, it doesn't want to do that because it's locked. So I'm gonna unlock the line layer. Now it just treats it like one more layer. When it's in the background mode, it kind of acts its own way. I'm gonna actually drag the pink layer below it. No surprise, you can no longer see the pink layer, but there's a trick for that. I'm gonna tell it that layer zero is actually a transparent layer, um, like a transparency layer by telling it, I'm gonna go into let me click on layer zero, which is my line layer. I'm going to go from normal to multiply. And multiply will show me kind of closer to how it's going to print, but it doesn't modify like the file at all and it's reversible. So here, if I do it in this order, I can have all of my color layers and I can still layer that underneath my line layer, which is how I'm going to be printing them anyway. So I can command control D or command D to deselect. And I have a little bit of a sense for how that's going to print. Now, problem here is that I want to see what it's going to look like. I'm making my plans. I, I want to know, I want to see what pink looks like. And so that's totally fine. But I cannot print this pink. I need all of my transparencies to be black, regardless of what color I'm going to print them in eventually. In order for them to be shot to the screen, they want to be, I need them to be as dark as possible. So here's another little trick here. So again, I'm on the pink layer and I want my pink layer to now be a black layer so that I can print it. Um, so you clicked on the pink layer. I'm gonna go ahead and lock transparency. So that's what this is, lock transparent pixels. This means that every bit of this image that's transparent is gonna stay transparent. I can go ahead and select black at this point and get my pink brush tool. And now I can just paint it black. And I can do this for every single one of my separations right before I print it so that I can have keep track of where my colors are. I can do this for every single layer and then I know for sure that that will layer well and it will be dark enough to shoot, right? So that's one really easy way to do color transparencies and separations.